Hi there, friends. Welcome to the Still Becoming Podcast, a place where women like you and me find help to move from where you are to where you want to be. I'm your host, Laura Acuna. The Still Becoming Podcast is where we gather to rethink our thinking about ourselves, our lives, and about our God. We will learn to reframe our shame and trade in limiting beliefs for the liberating truth from God's Word. And why the title Still Becoming? Because that's the Christian journey, isn't it? As we apply God's perfect word to our lives for growth and change, we are always growing, always learning, and still becoming the women He created us to be. It's never perfect, and it's not too late. Do I need to say that again? It is never perfect, and it is not too late. I am so glad you're here for the journey, and I'm praying that God will speak directly to you through today's episode. Are you ready? Let's go. Well, hello there. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 22 of the Still Becoming Podcast, and today's a special day. Today is the first time I'm going to interview another person on this podcast. Seasons 1 and 2, 20 episodes total, were just me, solo episodes, talking to you, talking directly to you. But over the summer, there was some iron sharpens iron stuff going on between me and some friends who are podcasters. Shout out to Amber Cullum of Grace Enough Podcast, who texted me and said, isn't it time that you started inviting guests on? And she was right. It was time. I cannot think of a better first guest, a more wonderful first guest than my friend, Jen Hand. I cannot wait for you to listen to the interview that we did together. It's really just a conversation between friends that we did together today. And so I'm going to read you her official bio because I really want you to know what her bona fides are, but she is so unique and so special. And so I want to share her official bio. And then I want to tell you a few things about her myself. Okay. Here's her official bio. Jen Hand, the executive director of Coming Alive Ministries, founded the ministry in 2012 and loves the honor of traveling nationally and internationally, inviting people to come alive in Christ through conferences, retreats, written resources, and counseling. She has had the joy of serving in over 30 countries. With a master's degree in trauma counseling, God opened a unique door for her to respond after natural disasters around the world, providing trauma care and the hope of Christ on the holy ground of suffering. Jen is an identical twin, and one of her favorite things is spoiling her nieces and nephews rotten. She loves to laugh until she cries and believes the joy of the Lord is her strength. Jen is the author of My Yes is on the Table, Moving from Fear to Faith, released in April 2022, and she's the host of the very popular My Yes is on the Table podcast, which you can find on all your favorite listening places. Now, a word about my friend Jen. We've known each other now for uh, several years. We've been roomies together. We have keynoted together at events. We have gone to events at the same time. We've seen each other, had meals together, hung out together, done Zooms together. We text together. And I just want to tell you, I'm old enough to be her mama, but I have learned so much from Jen. The joy of the Lord truly is her strength. There is no one like her. She is the real deal. And if you know Jen, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you're nodding your head with me. So it is with so much joy that I introduce you to my dear friend, Jen Hand. Well, hi, Jen. I am so excited you're here with me for my very first interview. This is so fun. And I mean, it was hard to get down to business because we're just friends, (laughs) real friends. And I know, uh, but your listeners, we're going to be friends too, right? So absolutely. Um, absolutely. I cannot wait. Yes. And I'm honored, honored to be here with you. You've thank been on my you. podcast. So what an honor to be on yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My listeners are going to love you. And I want to introduce the, uh, you to them because some of them know you. I know they do, but some of them don't know you. So I went through the bio earlier, but tell us about your book, My Yes is on the Table. Well, that was a dream come true book. And what it really came out of is God was asking me, will you live with your yes on the table that wherever, however, whatever I call you to do, you have already said yes. And I was like, I thought I had Lord. And he just (laughs) began to kind of unwrap for me. Yeah, but you have these fear stops. So how will you turn these fear stops into faith steps? So that's how the book was born. And I 
really connected with the book of Joshua and the Israelites journey into the promised land, because when we say yes to God, we're walking into the promised land he has for us. So the book is a journey with Joshua and myself and the readers as we answer the question, I want to say yes to God, but I'm afraid of blank. And you know, that's so many people's story. That was my story too. For so long, I felt the call on my life from God to speak and to write and to do all the things I'm doing now. But I always said, no, I just thought he couldn't possibly actually be saying that to me. And then, all, you know, and that, that's wrong. Even people would come up to me and suggest that to me. You ought to be a speaker. You know, when I was a little girl, people said, you should be a writer. I never did any of that because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And I believe that a lot of my listeners suffer with that too. It's the obstacle between God's call and their action, mm -hmm. right? So what was your biggest fear? Well, I love that you're pointing out that you struggle with it. I struggle with it. The listeners, we are not alone. And no. <laughs> no. when I asked the question, I got lots and lots of responses of people that were like raising their hand. So for me, the things that make me afraid might be totally different than what makes you afraid, Laura. Right, um, right. I mean, I would right. do some crazy things. And when God calls me, you know, going yeah, to war I zones. I actually know that about you. <laughs> and going to war zones, going to third world countries, traveling to the uttermost parts of the earth. But my fear is rejection. I want to make sure you like me. So releasing yes. a book is terrifying because you can put a two-star or one-star review on Amazon. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so my fear, if I was answering that would be rejection or it really hit me when I realized I have a fear of a success and a fear of failure. So that leaves me stuck smack in the middle. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is a good time to pause and ask the listener, what are you afraid of? What is your fear stop? Now describe to me why success would be fearful. Because what if you succeed once and then there's all these expectations and you can't succeed again? Or what if you don't have what it takes to sustain? Or I think a lot of people actually fear this and don't even know it. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they, they actually had heard me say that and they invited me to have coffee with them because they're like, I couldn't put words to that fear. But the truth is we sometimes shrink back because we're like, not just what if it fails, but what if this becomes bigger than what I can control? <laughs> yes, yes. It's really all control. It is. And so when you say yes to God, you have to you have to be, live open-handed and let him take control. Mm -hmm. Which he already is in control, but <laughs> right, we, we think we are. We like to pretend that if we keep it safe or small, because for me I'm a big dreamer and I know God has put those dreams inside of me, but I feel like if I can keep it small, then I won't be disappointed or be a disappointment. Yes. Boy, that's well said. That's well said. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. I sure can. Someone recently said to me, because I'm getting, you know, I've said this a million times. I'm going to be 65 as we record this tomorrow. And <gasps> <Is it tomorrow? laughs> yes. And, yeah. and so a lot of people, when you get to be my age and you're doing things, people are like, well, how do you do it at your age? Or, you know, how did you start that so late in life? And the only answer that I have really is that I was able to eliminate the fear, mm. the fear that stopped me. I did it afraid and I still do it afraid. I mean, don't you think there's still fear there? Oh, a hundred percent. That's what I want to make sure people know is that what God's called me to do does not mean that I went to Ukraine in the middle of the war and I was like, oh, I'm not afraid at all. Or even, I mean, it's not always that dramatic, Laura. I mean, it can be just as simple as starting something new or going to the gym. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like doing that by myself sometimes because what if I look dumb or, and I usually do, <laughs> my trainer just laughs at me. But the truth is faith is not the absence of fear, which sometimes we tend to think if we Christianize it enough, like, oh, I will just not be afraid. But faith is actually, in my opinion, where do we run with that fear? And in Joshua yeah. 1, 9, God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous. But then he doesn't condemn him for his fear. He gives the answer. He says, I'm coming alongside of you because he says, I am with you. So instead of condemning, it is a command, but what it really is, is him coming alongside us. Yes. And he is with us when we take those faith steps, mm -hmm. um, even when we're afraid. That's so true. Well, friends, I'm so excited to introduce you to a new ministry that I've just begun in July, 2023. Christian Life Coaching with Laura Acuna, guiding later bloomers on the journey to what's next, is not only up and running, but it's thriving. God has been so good to me, and I am loving coaching women. So what is Christian Life Coaching? Well, it's a transformative journey that combines faith-based guidance and personalized support to empower you to align your life with your Christian faith 
purpose, and potential. Through meaningful conversations, introspective exercises, and actionable strategies, my approach to coaching will help you gain clarity, deepen your connection with God, and replace limiting beliefs with the liberating truth from God's Word. All together, this will enable you to navigate your next season of life with renewed confidence and thrive as your authentic self, the woman God created you to be. If this resonates with you and you would like to work with me, head on over to my website, www.laura-acuna.com, tap the coaching tab, and there you'll see everything you need to know about my coaching practice, my approach to coaching, much more detail than I've given you just now, and a form to fill out to schedule a free discovery call. I would love to work with you and help you discover what's next. Okay, so one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today too is I know there's new stuff coming up for you. And there that is. is yes. And you described it as a surprising turn. So mm-hmm. I want you to tell us what the new yes to God is and tell us all about it. Well, God is a God of surprises. And, you know, <laughs> I think when we follow him, we have a plan. I mean, just for example, in August of this year, I would have never planned or dreamed that I would move. To, it's right. just a 45 minute away move, but I moved to the same street as my sister and I could not have dreamed that up, but God, you know, and so he made it very clear and it was a surprise. So if you're listening and you're in the middle of a surprise, just remember God is not surprised. <laughs> so <that's laughs> That good. is true. That uh, is but true. the surprising turn for me is he has really laid on my heart to begin talking more about trauma. I am a trauma trained mm-hmm. counselor. And I was not called to be in an office for an hour doing appointments with people. Uh, that would smother me. <laughs> <But> w- <laughs> That's where not you. God had, my yes to God has taken me has been around the world, standing on the holy ground of suffering with people after natural disasters or war. So I'm literally often standing with them with all of their belongings having been reduced to rubble in an earthquake or picking through the pieces of a tornado thrown about home. Mm. And so what God has called me and asked me to do is I would just go and debrief and offer baby steps to how do you find a new normal? And it won't be the same, but how do you move forward? And I believe God is calling me to bring that to people washing their dishes or in Mm -hmm. their car or on their treadmill in such a way that is standing on their holy ground of suffering with them and just doing the same thing I would do in Mozambique, Africa, where I came alongside and said, here's some baby steps to hope. And uh, with the trauma degree, God made our bodies and brains so intricately that there are things we can do to begin healing. Now it can take longer than we anticipate, but rebuilding is possible. Amazing. And of course, trauma is a big word, Mm -hmm. especially since COVID. We, We all talk about it. Why don't you define it for us? I love it. It is a big trendy word. And I think people, and I'm raising my hand. Okay. I was a trauma trained therapist. And it wasn't until, and I'll say this and then add something else. So in February of this year, I was in Turkey experiencing just horrific, seeing the results of a large earthquake that just devastated entire huge cities. And I have seen horrific things, but this was the freshest, most horrendous is the word I would use. And then while there was in an earthquake, a big one. So I came back home and one day I realized I was listening to a podcast, somebody mentioned they were like big T traumas, which is a word for when things like physically for your safety, you're afraid, like a natural disaster or uh, they named big T traumas. They're like accident, natural disaster, war. And I realized, wait, I have been in a car accident that could have killed me. Uh, I've been in an earthquake and I've been in a war zone all within the past year. And I am afraid to admit I'm traumatized. (laughs) That's a problem, you know? And so it was real eye-opening to me that we are scared to acknowledge because we don't want to deal with what comes with saying, I have experienced trauma, but every single person has, because I'm going to give you the actual definition. It doesn't mean now the big T is like earthquake, natural disaster, war, all that. But what really you can define trauma is any time that you have felt unsafe spiritually, physically, emotionally, or relationally. Wow. And when you feel unsafe, your brain responds like it's trauma. And then we get stuck sometimes. So I would encourage you to begin acknowledging and noticing, is there a time when I have a big reaction to something that's seemingly small? Like, for example, I dropped something or I forgot something at home or my boss called me in for a meeting and my heart starts racing and I have the big reaction or I explode in anger or I just want to freeze and scroll on social media. 
And maybe it's because that your body is responding to trauma that you never acknowledged or moved forward in because you didn't say it was trauma. Correct. I remember I've shared this with you already. My, my listeners know that I went for treatment about eight years ago for food, body image, and all of that. And I sat down in front of the therapist the first day. It wasn't my first time in therapy, but it was my first time in therapy with a specialist. Mm -hmm. And as I described my life to her, she said, okay, the first thing we're going to do is work on trauma. And I said, what trauma? I've learned since then. It's very typical. Mm -hmm. But then she said to me, Laura, you just described gaining a hundred pounds when you're 11 as a bomb going off in your life and everything changed. Mm -hmm. That is trauma. And so it opened my mind to a whole new world Mm -hmm. of healing for myself. And then I received that healing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We often compare our stories. So my story doesn't look like your story. So I cannot acknowledge my own pain because it may not look as big or feel as big. But the truth is when we're not willing to look at it, either because we're scared or because we're comparing or whatever, or we're just numbing, uh, then we're missing the hope and healing that it's available to us. Amen. Amen. It's so true. That comparison, because I said to myself for years, and um, I just was talking with a friend the other day, she, she was doing the same thing. My trauma is not as bad as her. So why am I, what's wrong with me? Why am I reacting like this? You know, I, I should be over this by now or what, you know, all those things we tell ourselves and yet it needs to be treated. Another friend said to me one time, if you don't deal with your mental health, eventually your mental health will deal with you. Yeah, that's true. Definitely true. Right. And that trauma comes back. I learned this this year. I, I took about six months where I realized I have a high capacity for trauma. Some people, ha- we all have different capacities. I have a high capacity for trauma, but my bucket was full. And I went, okay, I have to empty my trauma bucket before I can move forward and just took time to really do that. And so recognizing is a real key to freedom. Absolute Mm self-awareness. Recognizing is it like 80% of the battle is Mm -hmm. knowing you've got a problem and, and then seeking help for it. And, you know, we could talk all day about the brain and how it's created to heal and how brain science lines right up with what God tells us in Mm -hmm. his word. It's amazing. It's amazing. Psalm 139 is true. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And I could get so excited about that. And geek out if people even say that. I don't know about the (laughs) the science behind how God uses our brain and body to work together. And and that the fight, flight, or freeze response is not bad. It is God's gift to us. It's just beginning to recognize when, oh, wait, I don't need to stay stuck in that. I need to use the other areas of my brain and body and nervous system to not be continually in that cycle. Amazing. We could geek out on it. I I love that stuff. I just went to the American Association of Christian Counselors conference, not too far from you. And they kept coming up on the stage the whole three days saying brain science backs up the word of God, brain science. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to fear science. And it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. Okay. So now I want want you to talk to me about the surprising turn Mm -hmm. and what it looks like when you're going to be offering help to those of us at home and not in war zones. Well, I would love for to invite you to a couple of things. One, I'm going to have a free webinar. And by the time this airs, it won't be live anymore, but I'm going to offer the replay or eventually maybe do it live again. But you can go to www.aftertraumahope.com slash webinar. Okay, we'll put that in the show notes. Look how fancy you are, Laura. <laughs> I love it. Aftertraumahope.com slash webinar. And I will have a webinar there to kind of help you begin thinking about finding hope after trauma. And then if you want to take a deeper dive, or if you just want to skip the free and go on to a course, our guide is what I'm calling it, because course feels very homeworky, but I have an after trauma hope guide that is four video sessions. And they're short because when you've been traumatized, you're tired. That's one of the effects of trauma. And so they're like 10 minutes at the most of me sharing the, how do you rebuild? So I talk about rebuilding is possible. How do you understand the effects of trauma? How do you understand and use your brain and body to heal from trauma? How do you lean into others and how do you experience hope? So, which spells rubble because Um, when I was in that earthquake and saw rubble all around me is when I began to see like, you really can unbury out of this rubble, but it takes time and it takes work, but you can rebuild and something new, a new normal. So, and there's a bonus private podcast links from counselors that are in private practice that I interview. So a counseling appointment is typically at least at minimum $100 for an hour. And this is two therapists giving you their wisdom for just the cost of the course. So yeah. That's wonderful. And you know, this is a wonderful opportunity too, because 
as a life coach myself, uh, several of my clients and many people in my personal life are on long waiting lists to get Mm -hmm. in with therapists right now. And they need triage. They need help. And this is just a real baby step that's doable. And we are going to set it up where it's also when you buy one, you get one for a friend so that you do not have to do it alone because trauma is very isolating so that you can lean into others and do it together. And you know what you're modeling for us too, Jen? You're modeling something that is really important to highlight, I think. And that is that you have a degree, you have a master's as a trauma counselor, but God did not call you into private practice. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us who have black and white thinking, (laughs) we think that it's wasted. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. That is not true. And, uh, you know, I spent a lot of years trying to force myself into a box and it's like, no, God created me. So out of the box. That's how I thrive. (laughs) But then there are people that God specifically created to operate in that box. Isn't it amazing how we're all made differently? Yes. And you can work together, which is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. I really want my listeners to hear that, that when we say yes to God, it may not be the traditional route we thought we were going to go. That's right. It's not, I did not. I honestly didn't want to step into this because I'm a seven on the Enneagram. I'm happy. (laughs) I'd rather talk about coffee and Jesus, you know. But God has just so compelled me to talk about it, especially after my own experience of what it has been like to put these things into practice. Exactly. Exactly. Yesterday in our Bible study, our women's Bible study, we were talking about what do we do in response to the healing and the love that God has poured into our lives. And it's, we end up serving in areas we never thought we would serve Mm -hmm. in. And you know, something I want to say too, is part of what I realized I was traumatized just this year was a dream that came true. So maybe there's a listener that has had a dream come true and then feels disappointed by it. Uh-huh. And it was like, that was a big thing for me to acknowledge. Like, oh, there's disappointment can also be a trauma. Yes. Which is hard to, to say. So I don't know why I just feel the Holy Spirit leading me that someone listening maybe needed to hear that too. Like maybe you had something really good happen, but it still didn't turn out exactly like you had planned. That is something to take to healing as well. Let me restate that back to you just so I hear that correctly. When we say yes to God and we follow through and we overcome the fear Mm -hmm. and it ends up not turning out the way we thought it would Mm -hmm. and we're disappointed, that doesn't mean the yes was wrong. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then it doesn't mean we're done either. Yes. (laughs) Because I love in Joshua, they're there and it says in Joshua 18, okay, how long will you go off putting on, taking on the rest of the land God's already promised you? So it's not like a one and done. It's a continued journey of obedience. Yes. And while you were speaking about rubble, I was thinking about Nehemiah Mm -hmm. and, you know, he has to clear the rubble out before he can rebuild Mm -hmm. and he needs help. He needed help. Yes. And when you're trying to rebuild, the enemies come. I'm reading Nehemiah right now and (laughs) I can't pronounce all their names, but these people come and they throw sticks and stones at the people rebuilding the wall. And that's why we need each other, because it says that the, those building the wall formed next to each other and next to each other. And one was working with one hand and had a weapon in the other. Amen. And Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. I'm not coming down. They were yep. trying to get him to stop. And he just said, Lord, grant me success and strengthen my hands for the work. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Well, we're going to have to come to an end now. I could talk Uh to you all day long. I would Um, love to talk to you all day. (laughs) I know. I know. We'll have to do a part two sometime because I know now once the audience knows who you are, they're going to want to hear more about your story. But I want to know, first of all, you're going to pray for us, but I want you to tell us where we can find you Mm -hmm. and all the things, your podcast, your book, your website, everything. Okay. Well, my website is jenniferhand.org. So you can go there. And if you're interested in the trauma course, it is under the shop page. So you'll be able to find it there. Again, the webinar is at a different page because I honestly don't know how to do anything on my website. So I had to do something easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll be honest. Me know. too. I'm Me too. keeping it real here. So, <laughs> um, but, and the podcast is called My Yes is on the Table and you can find all of that on jenniferhand.org. So Thank you. And it will all be in the show notes. So you can just go there and click through. We'll have live links there and everything else. Okay, Jen, I have one last question mm-hmm. before you pray. Tell me you're in your forties now. I'm allowed to say that. And you're very young, but where is the grace in aging for you? And what is sweet about this season in life? I love it. Yes, I am 41. And I think when I turned 40, I wasn't sure how I would feel, but honestly, I was excited. I don't know. I just felt freedom to be me in a new, different way. And I like very specifically, we, my twin sister and I on our 40th birthday had a roller skating party. (laughs) 
<laughs> and I bought pink roller skates and skated around that ring and just really realized like, oh, this is, I am in a new stage of freedom to just celebrate and not try to put myself in that box, but just to be me. And so it's been really fun, to be honest. I love my 40s. Now, I just recently moved to my college town and I live like right behind the dorm I went to. And it feels like I should still be a college dorm person in my mind, but it's been 20 years. So that's what's weird <laughs> to me is I forget that I'm 41. Yes. Well, <laughs> so and my body reminds me sometimes. So <laughs> true. In episode one of the season, the first words out of my mouth were, I still think of myself as 35. So mm. I, it, that's a good thing. It's not a mm. bad thing to think of yourself as younger. All right, Jen, thanks for that. And will you pray us out? Yes. Lord, I thank you for each listener and for Laura and just this time together. And we just pray that you will give us the strength to put our yes on the table and to remember the table you've invited us to is good, that you are good, you are God, and you are faithful. And I pray for the one that's listening that heard and it realized like, oh, I may need to acknowledge some trauma, some pain in my life so that healing can come, that you will give them courage, that you will remind them that you are with them. And uh, God, just give them hope to take the next baby steps and to rebuild and out from under whatever rubble has come from an earth shattering circumstance or even just a small rumble. All of that does, in fact, change us. And so, God, we want to be changed by you and have our hope in you. And so I just thank you for your faithfulness and pray for each listener today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, friend. I love you dearly. I love you. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Oh, I love my interview with Jen. She's such a joy. Now, if you're new to the podcast, you need to know that at the end of every episode, we do a soul fitness, strengthening your core, your spiritual core exercise. It's a journaling prompt. So here we go. Opening your journal. Jen talked about feeling free to be her true self when she turned 40. What a blessing. What a gift at such a young age from my perspective. So here's your journaling prompt. Imagine your true self, the woman God created you to be. No roles to play, just you. What does she love? What does she long to do? Describe what makes her come alive. What unfinished business, dreams, hopes, and goals do you have that you want to see come to fruition in this next season of your life? Is there any rubble that you need to clear away first? What fear stops are getting in the way of your faith steps? This journaling exercise is one that I normally give new coaching clients during my early time with them, the first, second, or third sessions, because it helps get the mind thinking, who am I really underneath it all? And so I'm wondering if this conversation with Jen bubbled up some things in you. And if they did, know this, God doesn't bring up or bubble up hard memories to terrorize us or to torment us, but to heal us. If Jen's description of trauma struck a chord with you, I encourage you to check out her free Trauma After Hope webinar. It's now in replay form. The link is in the show notes. And if you want more, you might consider her After Trauma Hope Guide. The link is also in the show notes. She is such an encourager and a hope giver. And even when she tackles hard subjects like trauma, she brings so much joy into the experience. It's, it's really beautiful, quite honestly. Jen's offer to us reminds me of a scripture I included in my book, Still Becoming. It's Zephaniah 3.18 in the Message Translation. The accumulated sorrows of your exile will dissipate. I, your God, will get rid of them for you. You've carried those burdens long enough. Now, before you go, please subscribe to the Still Becoming podcast so that the message will reach more and more women who need to hear how much God loves them and has a plan for their life. And will you share this episode with friends and help me expand my reach again to women who need this message? May God bless you and keep you until we meet again. I'll see you next time on the Still Becoming Podcast.